Hey, I'm Ed Doyle, President of Real Food Hospitality Strategy and Design. And I'm taking time today to sit down with some of the thought leaders across the spectrum of the hospitality industry to understand where we go from here today. Now here is a weird place. I'm talking to them all remotely. It's no substitute for being in the same room, but it's no substitute for being in a restaurant together. So we're gonna see what comes out of today as we look to the future to redefine our hospitality industry and understand how we can support our clients and frankly, how we can support each other as we try to get through these challenging times. My name is Andy Husbands. I am the pit master and owner of the Smoke Shop Barbecue, author of six barbecue cookbooks. Most, uh, my most recent one is Backyard Barbecue, and that's all of our kind of secrets that we do here, and you learn how to make great barbecue, and I hope to see you soon. Andy Husbands from the Smoke Shop. Thanks for sitting down with me, man. I'm really... Um... I wish we were sitting in the same room having a beer or a bourbon together. Yeah, this is a little different. We've been friends for a long time. So uh, this is a funny way to see you. But um, yeah, this is cool. Nice to see you. You and me connecting is one thing, but you connecting with all of your guests. I mean, that's the hardest thing, right? Now, I think as we go through this whole craziness, the only thing that would be really awful is if we get to the other side of this and, ha and haven't learned anything, right? And I know you've been so active trying to make some changes at a legislative level, but you know, what are we going to get to the other side of this and say we learned as a hospitality industry? When 9-11 happened, the economy tanked, it's like, oh, let's trim the fat and let's figure out how we survive in this quote unquote new world at that time. And that's going to be the same thing here. I think, you know, we're looking at um, how are we, when I say profitable, I mean just surviving for the next year and a half, two years. Um, with our core staff or, you know, the people who have been with us for a long time and how are we still providing great barbecue and a great experience in the new world going forward? I mean, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, well, you've pivoted better than many, right? You're doing your pop-ups, right? People need their barbecue, right? And, and barbecue is one of those great things that you can buy a lot of it and put it in your fridge and eat it all week long. So, you know, how has your near-term guest hospitality experience transformed? And, and are you looking at how you transform it in a longer view? Like when we do come back in the new normal? With hospitality, one of the things is that's taking care of people. And so that's what we're trying to show is that, you know, we are, I would like to think that we are above and beyond where we need to be for keeping people safe. But externally for the customer, you know, we're double wrapping everything. So if you got a bag from us, we'd wrap it like we used to. Um, you know, a little more, you know, internally we're, you know, definitely, you know, wearing masks and gloves, but we, it looks like the same thing when you're getting pickup or delivery, but then it's wrapped in another bag and sealed tight. So then the drivers, they, you know, you know, that even though the driver touched that bag, you can just rip that bag off, throw that away. And there you have our product. So we're showing safety, showing that we're taking care of people through kind of hospitality. And, you know, that's kind of how we're approaching it uh, going forward. You know, when we are um, open to the public and allow them to come into our, our business, again, it's, you know, making sure we're safe and the customer's safe and doing that with government direction, um, but also just going beyond that and, and really working at uh, solid practices. Taking care of people is hospitality. That, that couldn't be more, right? I mean, and, and I know that's so fundamental to what you do, but as a consumer, you know, what are you going to be looking for for hospitality and your experience on the other side of this? I mean, I can't, I personally, as a consumer, can't wait to go out, right? Yeah, no doubt. I can't wait to go sit in a restaurant uh, with my wife. I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be the same things that we're doing. You know, are people wearing masks? Are, you know, how is the social distancing working? Um, you know, I, I think it's just going to be an interesting process of how we see the new world. You know, I, I see this in the grocery stores. You know, are people spaced out? I was in the, I was in the post office today really well organized, they had a line, you know, here's where you stand, here's where you move. And so it's clear, and I, th I think it's looking like, how are you explaining what your policies and procedures are, and then how are they being enforced? It's funny because the word enforced isn't something that, we were talking about in a management meeting, actually this Monday, we Zoom management meeting, and you know, we're intense about it. You need to back up, six feet please, okay, this is your exit, you go out the other way, and it's a little more stern than we would normally talk to even a driver or even we have people picking up food, different than we would talk to them. But they, I think 
they know we're doing it for safety and that we have to be very clear about this. You know, you would never in pre-COVID talk to a customer like that, but right. now it's like, hey, we're, we're serious about this for our safety and your safety. Well, connecting back to ta- if hospitality is taking care of people in these strange times, you are somehow delivering even a higher level of, ele- of hospitality by saying, there's your door. Right. You know, certainly one of the things I wanted to ask you, I mean, you go through a lot of beef, right? And your brisket is the stuff to be reckoned with. We're living in the age where, you know, when you really ask Wendy's restaurants, where's the beef? You really mean, where's the beef? And what are you seeing happening as we go forward? What do you, what's your read from that point of view? I mean, you got to be worried about that. You're so particular about your sources. Yes, our sources are still there. We're still buying the same product and that's a high quality product. Uh, but we're seeing an unbelievable increase on certain products. Um, brisket is the one that we're really seeing a lot. I mean, it's um, 30% more expensive right now. So what does that mean? Um, it means we still buy the same quality. It means we have to raise our prices, unfortunately. So we've done that. Uh, I hope the consumer understands that because they don't see it in the store means it's not around. And that means scarcity is, you know, expensive. Um, we're also looking at maybe doing, um, like we have a process for our brisket and you know, this, this beef process with our certain, our secret spice rub. So we're looking to do that with mushrooms and put up like kind of almost like a quote unquote, like burnt ends mushroom sandwich, which is, uh, mushrooms are still available and they're, you know, a little more, uh, uh, a little less expensive. So maybe we can, you know, turn some customers on to some really great vegetables and other products that maybe um, they haven't tried before. Is that something you were thinking about before this crisis or is that something you think that came out of this? This is coming out of it. I mean, this is, you know, we've always had vegetarian options and we've always had um, cost effective items, but those cost effective items are not necessarily um, as cost effective as they were, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, we're locked in on our rib price so for the next year. So we're good with that. Uh, so the ribs, you know, you get a rack of ribs for like about 30 bucks and that, that will feed a couple of people. So go for it. For sure. Um, you, know, you talked about some of the different protocols that your staff are following for, relative to your customers. How do you re-envision being a staff member in the hospitality world, certainly within your space and beyond? I mean, the roles and responsibilities. Are we going to have a, you know, hand sanitizer sommelier coming table side? Um, yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, our staff, um, I'm watching, I'm watching a couple of people leave right now. They're wearing masks. They're leaving wearing gloves. Um, when they show up, we take their temperature. We, they, they have to show up wearing gloves. They have to show up wearing a mask. Um, so there's that part of it. Uh, to, you know, you asked like, what it's going to be like working for it. That's if you still have a job. It's going to be, you know, our projections are 50%. In fact, we projected less just so we can know we can hit our budgets. So about 40% we're looking at. Um, so there's going to be not that many jobs. Um, but, you know, just, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of um, safety precautions that we're going to have to factor in our kind of environment. If you want me to go deeper in what I think is going to happen in the future. Yeah, Riff, come on, I want to hear it. And I've been saying this for a while. Uh, we've all been to the airports. We've all seen those iPads. I see those coming. I see those coming faster than they were going to come. They're going to be iPads at table and there's going to be uh, less servers and uh, people think things are going to be done through computers. Uh, maybe not for the fancy places, but definitely for places like mine that, you know, listen, we're a barbecue restaurant. You probably got a pretty good idea. Be a button you'll hit if you need an expert and an expert will walk over. Otherwise less touching. You know, we used to talk about table touch. I think right. talk about table touching and maybe just me kind of <laughs> waving from afar asking how everything is. Right. Um, I think that's probably going to happen. Um, and I don't see, you know, and I, and I think you'd also see a lot more um, the support staff doing more than just uh, clearing tables, but really uh, disinfecting or, you know, wiping down tables, uh, making sure that everything, including that iPad, are wiped down so then the next customer will be able to come in and um, feel safe about it. I think safety is going to be job one. You know, one of the things that I've been saying is I honestly feel that COVID has been an accelerant on a lot of the trends that have already been happening within our world, right? Whether it's digital connection or different service styles or reduction of staffing, all these things that, you know, the industry was doing. Now this is really just ginned up the need to get it done. Yeah, and as well as, you know, I mean, delivery. So delivery, 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 right? And uh, I happen to have, uh, I'm really proud of the partners I work with. It's DoorDash and, and Caviar. They've also, they've cut their, uh, our billing in half, which is nice. 
um, those of you that don't know, don't you deal with it, hey, it, they charge us a fair amount of money. And um, restaurants operate in very small margins already, so it's hard to keep going forward, but they've been um, great, great partners and really helped us, you know, work through this kind of messy situation. Um, but I think, you know, we, if you looked at studies, uh, millennials and, 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 and have been going more for the delivery option, for the convenience option. Mm -hmm. And we, we always, it was forecasted that it would always increase. Well, look at today, I'm gonna to do 90% delivery. So um, what will be when we're allowed to open, it will still probably be higher than it was pre-COVID. So I think that's another accelerant that we're seeing is that people will probably do more delivery and takeout. Good yep. news for me in barbecue is that barbecue is built for speed. It's built for takeout. It's built for reheating. We can do it, you know, so I'm pretty excited for that. My brothers and sisters in the industry, those that are maybe um, higher end, fancy, serving crudo, which I love to eat. That's not a dig. That's just like those are the people I'm concerned about. When you right. look at a bag that costs $100 from me, that is a heavy, physically heavy bag. When it comes from a fancier, you know, um, high touch restaurant, that bag isn't as physically heavy. So, you know, what is the value consumer? Value perception. Yep. Value, value, value. And it's hard to put that experience of fine dining in a bag. I worry about my brothers and sisters in, in, in that. But I, I know the ones I know are very, very smart and I know they'll figure out a way to get through it. I, I think, again, that's the whole point of these conversations is to understand how we do what we do that makes us whole, that motivates us, gets us out of bed in the morning, you know, that's made us stick with this industry for so long. How can we deliver that and get the feedback that we need in a world where people may not be consuming the food in front of us? And, you know, we may have to recalibrate our measures of success. So, you know, you mentioned earlier doing a table touch from six feet away, right? We always talk about table touches. You know, what else do you see as being transformative and how you deliver a hospitality experience in a world of social distancing? I mean, I think, you know, for us, you know, again, we're, we're going to work on our core, which is just Boston's best barbecue. That's it. That's what we do. So I, I don't want to say we're going to change too much. I really feel it's the safety and perception of safety that's going to be the highest level thing. And after that, it's, it's I think it's going to kind of I don't know. I, I, I wish I knew the answers, but I think it's going to be different. You know, the energy is going to be different, but I think people are going to be interested and in itching to go out and they're going to want some sort of experience. I'll be a changed experience. Um, you know, it'll be interesting because there's that income that was spent on, um, on going out, right? The entertainment. Well, when we look at entertainment, that's a big pie chart, but a lot of that's not coming back anytime soon. I don't know how sports are going to happen. You know, I'm a season ticket holder for the Patriots. That makes me nervous. Um, sitting in a, in a place with 80,000 people. So how does that happen? Um, so if that dollar is still there, you know, I think it, most of it will still be there. I'm sure um, I know that a lot of people will be unemployed and I'm sad about that. Um, but I think some of that dollar will still be there. Hopefully it will come to restaurants um, and other people of need. You know, I, I'm not, I, you know. Hopefully it will go a lot of places, but I think it won't go to certain places for a while. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. How does that dollar get redeployed? And hopefully people continue to see the, the entertainment of food and beverage as being just that. Yeah. And, you know, look, we're, we're here and we're working right now. And I, I mean, I can hear the orders being made right now. And um, this is our life. And this is today. And the thing I talk to my team about is this sucks in a kind of a grand scope. Yes, we all rather it wasn't, but it is the way it is. So let's enjoy it. You know, and I think that's what I want our customers to still enjoy it. We're still gonna play have our fun music. We're still gonna have great cocktails when we're allowed to open. We still have our unbelievable beer list. We still have our best of Boston barbecue. So let's enjoy that. I love to hear you talking about, you know, let's get through this and make the most of it. I know you're always thinking outside the box. So I'm sure you've been thinking about on the other side of this, after, after we extinguish this forest fire, right, and, and there's a little more room in the forest for things to pop up, you know, what are you pondering is going to be the next great thing in your world or in the food service world that's going to spring from the ashes of this forest fire? It's hard to know what the future is going to be. It's, it's so, you know, I remember in the beginning of March, just everything changing very quickly and having meetings and things changing by hour. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what, what's going to spring out of this, but I know that, you know, quick serve, I think everybody knows that quick serve to go is going to be a big, big focus. I think people are going to design their restaurants with this in mind, something we did already because barbecue is built to go. I mean, so 
I, I think that's going to be interesting, you know, and I, I think the great restaurants are going to figure out how to, how to be profitable and how to be successful. Right. You know, I, I think I'd rather say, say successful than profitable, um, you know, just them to make a living and, and to, to enjoy it. As I mentioned before, I, I know you've been doing a lot on the legislative side. Are you getting a, a good ear up on Beacon Hill and beyond? Or, or what, what are you seeing in that front? So I'm, I'm a vice president of the Massachusetts Restaurant Association. So I'm pretty involved with all this stuff. Right now, kind of our focus has been um, helping um, put the rules and policies in place for when we open. Um, the, uh, Char Charlie Baker and his, his, uh, his government has been really receptive and listening to us, which is really great. They've invited us to be at the table, not just us, but other restaurateurs. It's not just about the MRA, but the MRA does represent all restaurants. Um, and, um, yeah, they've been listening, you know, look, we have some, you know, it's gotta be tough for them. I have some compassion. Everybody is lobbying them. Um, everybody is trying to get something done. Everybody's trying to get open. Um, so it's, you know, they're juggling a lot of balls there. So I, I think, um, you know, yeah, they've been listening to us. Are we getting everything we want? No. Am I really concerned about a lot of restaurants? Yes. Um, the term bloodletting has been used a lot. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be bad. And, but I don't think just restaurants, you know, and I know this is a talk, we're talking about restaurants here, but I think it's going to be bad for a lot of people for a while. Yep. And, uh, and I worry a lot about a lot of people, you know, um, we have a fair amount of employees that haven't been able to collect. And so we've been raising money, uh, for them to feed them. These are people that can't forget rent, can't feed themselves. So we've been raising a ton of money and giving them directly to them. And I'm really proud of my, my volunteer managers and stuff doing that. Now we're shifting to opening and now employing them. So, um, you know, I think the human aspect, the human toll has been really challenging and, it's what I care about most. Are you surprised by the level of direct support that's come from the consumer to the restaurant employees? I'm honored. And I can't even tell you, you know, we, you, one thing that, you know, and I guess I could say one thing that I, that's been very successful for us, you know, these barbecue boxes serves four to six people for $125 total value. When we talk about a heavy bag, this is a heavy bag full of barbecue. And I think I'm going to keep doing this. This has been really successful for us. And what's really cool is, you know, we have a, it's on our website and you can sign up for one and people are, um, we have a tip button and people are giving us a lot of tips and it's really been neat and how excited they are to get barbecue and how excited they are to help out. And, you know, we, we used to, right now, if this was last year, we would be serving 3000 people a day. I'm sorry, 3000 people a week at each location, 10,000 people a week we were serving. That's a lot. And we have been seeing just such an outpour of, of like, we want to see you come back. We're excited to get some barbecue, even if it's for a day. And am I surprised? I guess, yes. I'm honored is what I am. I'm, I'm like just blown away by the support. Um, I'm just psyched. It's been, that's been the, one of the, the human element. And I'm sure you're running into it here and there. And, you know, just what we see people are being super cool to each other. And I'm really yeah. excited about that. You know, I, I think it's really easy to lose sight of how important restaurants and food service are to our day to day. I think this has been a reminder of that, of, of the amazing work that happens in the industry every single day. Um, people miss it. People want to get as much of it as they can now. I need some barbecue, so I got to get over there this weekend. But um, I really appreciate the um, the chance to sit down with you, Andy. It's always great. I, I really look forward to sitting at your bar and, and having a bourbon and, and some brisket soon. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. I'll see you. Bye. Thank you.